Shielding and deshielding is one of the most confusing topics in chemistry or organic chemistry. However, if we think of it as protection, like a shield is actually used for, it can become very simple. Let's look at hydrogen, for example. Hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus and therefore one electron surrounding the nucleus in the electron cloud. If hydrogen has its electron all to itself, meaning hydrogen's not using it to form a bond, you could say that hydrogen's nucleus is shielded or protected by its electron cloud. But suppose a carbon atom came along and formed a bond with the hydrogen. Carbon, being more electronegative, will cause inductive effects or chemical shift in electron density. Carbon will act as a withdrawing group, withdrawing electron cloud density from the hydrogen toward itself, leaving the hydrogen deshielded, meaning not protected by its electron cloud. That's deshielding. So now suppose fluorine came along and formed a bond with the carbon. Fluorine, being more electronegative, will have an even greater inductive effect and will act as an electron withdrawing group on the carbon. So carbon's electron cloud density will shift toward the fluorine. So fluorine will cause a deshielding effect on the carbon, leaving the carbon unprotected by his full electron cloud density. Alternately, suppose a less electronegative atom formed a bond with the carbon, like boron, for instance. Carbon, being more electronegative than boron, will actually cause an inductive effect and withdraw electrons from boron's electron cloud and therefore become more shielded, while boron will be deshielded, losing electron cloud density. Therefore, boron is less protected, carbon is more protected, and hydrogen less protected. So let's look at this example. We have carbon bonded to four hydrogens. Carbon is more electronegative than the hydrogens. So carbon will create inductive effects and act as an electron withdrawing group, shifting the hydrogen's electron cloud density toward itself. So carbon becomes more shielded or protected by electron cloud density, whereas the hydrogens become deshielded or less protected by their electron cloud density. So let's look at shielding and deshielding effects in another molecule. It's similar to the previous example. However, I added a hydroxide group here in place of the hydrogen. So carbon is more electronegative than the hydrogens it's attached to. So it will cause an electron withdrawing effect, withdrawing electron cloud density from the hydrogen toward the carbon shielding the carbon, but deshielding the hydrogens. Oxygen on this end is more electronegative than the carbon, so it will cause an electron withdrawing effect, withdrawing electron cloud density from the carbon toward itself, shielding itself, and deshielding the carbon. Well, notice there's an overall chemical shift toward the right, Overall, the electron cloud density is shifting toward the right, toward the more electronegative atom. Well, what does that imply for the hydrogens? Well, they're further deshielded. Unlike in the previous example, when there was no other electronegative atom than carbon, these were deshielded due to electron withdrawing effects of the carbon. However, that was the only effect. Well, what does that imply? These hydrogens are left even further deshielded or further unprotected by electron cloud density, which makes them more susceptible to outside forces. For instance, magnetic resonance. In my video called HNMR, Shielding and Deshielding of Hydrogens, you'll learn about what these effects imply on the HNMR spectrum graph. Simple as that.